Hello everyone, welcome back to this edition of uh, East Coast Taekwondo's Training Tips. I'm Casey Mezzareski. With me today is Josh Walker, one of our black belts here. Today we're going to go over a sparring uh, technique for you. This is, uh, this is a technique we've been doing here at East Coast Taekwondo for a long, long time. Some people out there probably don't know it. Most people out there probably don't know. Uh, just the people that have been to East Coast will know this. But we have a student, uh, Billy Patron, who back in the uh, early 90s was a U.S. national team member. He actually was the alternate for the Barcelona Olympics for the middleweight division. So this was a technique Billy used to do all the time. We called it lean back roundhouse because that's exactly what you're going to do. More recently, I saw on YouTube on uh, Philip Yoon's channel, which is a great channel, he was calling it the Moldova kick. So I guess that's the name it's getting now. But for me, old habits break hard and uh, I'm always gonna call it the lean back roundhouse because since I was 12 years old, that's what we called it. So lean back roundhouse is a little bit different than your traditional roundhouse. Traditional roundhouse, you're upright, you're, you're in a guardian stance. When you throw the kick, you stay upright and you're landing in guardian stance. The lean back roundhouse is more of like a defensive roundhouse. It's going to be off the back leg and it's going to be just like it sounds. You're leaning back. You're going to lean your upper body as far back as you can. And as you're doing that, that helps you throw your kick out even further and you're going to act, you're going to be almost in a T and it's going to be like a counterbalance. So as far out as you can reach here, you're going to counter that weight with your body being out here. So I'm going to demonstrate it once on Josh with him just standing there and then I'm going to show you the different scenarios and situations you would use this sparring. So I'm here, as you can see, I might be a little bit further out of range uh, than Josh because he's taller than me. I can get a point still with a lean back roundhouse if we're in open stance because I'm going to be able to get a little bit further distance. I'm going to throw my leg out and lean way back so it's going to look like this. Hey! As you can see, I even felt that I was hitting up high more of my ankle joint than with the top of my foot. So I can get more distance. I'll even come back here a little bit more. Hey! And I can still reach him. So when would you use this kick? Now it's possible, uh, depending on the situation and the, the uh, uh, tournament style you're in, uh, especially like point tournaments where the referee comes in and stops you after every, almost every exchange to see what the uh, score is. I've done this before, this is a good way to score a point, is you usually start probably about this far away because a lot of point tournaments are in like uh, high school gyms or whatever, and they got you know smaller than your standard size rings. So you're usually about this far away. As soon as that referee says go, you that's all and score a point. Okay? Just go, you catch a lot of people off guard. Don't over rely on it because someone's gonna pick up on it right away, but throw it in there every once in a while, it's a good way to score a point. Now let's say uh, Josh is kicking. One of the ways you would use this is to counter a front leg kick. If Josh is a front leg fighter, he's got that leg up, and let's say he's just holding it there, ready to just tag me as soon as I move in. Okay, there's no way I can really get anything. You know, anything I try to do, he, he's, he's already got an advantage. His foot is up in the air, ready to go. So what I'm going to do is lean back, and as you'll see, as Josh holds his leg up there, my kick's going to come almost come up and underneath, and then score. So Josh gets ready to kick, and holds his leg up. That's all! Okay? So again, just keep practicing that. Josh is going to try to hit me in the head, and I'm going to keep my head as far back as I can as he does it this time. So Josh picks his leg up. Let's go! And get that head up. You can even, in the next scenario, what we're going to show is axe kick. You get your head looking the other way. So now let's say Josh switches his feet. So now he's going to throw axe kick. The most common target for axe kick is going to be the head. And even if I throw a regular roundhouse, even if I score and Josh is throwing the axe kick, it's very possible he's still going to get that and hit me in the face or in the chest and get a point one way or another. But what I'm going to do is Josh throws his axe kick, I'm going to time it. I want to wait till his leg is all the way up and as it gets to the top, then I come underneath. As I do that, this time I'm really going to twist my, and I'll do it this way quick so you can see, I'm going to twist. And I'm going to keep my head out of the way as far as I can. 
This is a little bit of a dangerous kick because you are taking your eyes off your opponent for a second, and it's going to take you a little bit longer to recover. But if you time it right, it works really well. So Josh is going to throw his axe kick. That's all! Okay, I throw my kick, and as you see, the, the only real way you can save yourself after that is you kick. You're twisted so much, you're facing backwards, you pretty much have to run back to get away from your opponent so you don't get hit with a follow-up technique. But if you do it right, that kick should stop him from doing any kind of follow-up. If you do it with enough force, enough power, he's going to be stunned for a second. You can move out of the way and recover and get ready for the next exchange. Now, another time you would use this kick, and this is very good if you can time it, especially shorter guys versus taller guys like me and Josh, is spinning hook. Josh throws a spinning hook. It's very easy for someone Josh's height to hit me in the head with a spinning hook because of just of the height distance. He doesn't have to pick his leg up as high, and he's going to have a lot of reach. But if you're good with this kick, you can get right underneath that spinning hook kick. So again, we're going to go a little bit slower. Josh throws his spinning hook. Hey! As you see, I lean under. I'm actually, as I lean and twist my body, I'm going with the kick which is important. You never want to try to move into a kick, especially a kick like a spinning hook that's very powerful. You don't want, if I was here and Josh was throwing that spinning hook, I wouldn't want to go that way because as you can see, now his foot's coming, my head's coming, it's going to make that impact all the worse if we do hit. But at least here, if he's throwing the kick and I'm going this way, if he does hit me because I'm rolling with it, I lessen the chances of me getting knocked out. But one more time, Josh throws it. Hey! As you can see, you drop, you lean back, and get that leg out there. So that's the lean back roundhouse kick, or as today they like to call the Moldova kick. Um, I like to thank Philip Young's channel for pointing that out. And uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to our video here, or our channel here at East Coast Taekwondo. Like us on Facebook, leave any comments you want below, and if you're ever in the Fairfield, Connecticut area, come down and check us out. Thank you.